it's possible that a human-like intelligent civilization has previously existed on Earth. Oh, yeah. The reason I say this is like, it is jarring to think that we would not, if they went extinct, we wouldn't be able to find evidence of them. After a sufficient amount of time. Uh, after a sufficient amount of time. Of yeah. course, there's like, uh, like basically humans, like if we destroy ourselves now, the human civilization destroy ourselves now, after a sufficient amount of time, we would not be, we'd find the evidence of the dinosaurs, we would not find evidence of yeah. us humans. Yeah, that's, that's kind of an odd thing to think about. Although I'm not sure if we have enough knowledge about species going back for billions of years that we could we could we might be able to eliminate that possibility but it's an interesting question of course this is a similar question to you know there were lots of intelligent species throughout the, throughout our galaxy that have all disappeared uh, yeah that's super sad that um there exactly that there there may have been much more intelligent alien civilizations in our galaxy that are no longer there yeah um I, you actually talked about this um, that humans might destroy ourselves, yeah, and how we might preserve our knowledge, yeah, and advertise that knowledge <laughs> to other. <laughs> advertise is a funny word to use. There's no, PR, from a PR perspective, there's no financial gain in this. <laughs> uh, you know, like make it like from a tourism perspective, make it interesting. Can you describe how? Well, how you there's think a couple things. I, I broke it down into two parts. Well, actually, three parts. One is, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of things we know that what if what if we were to, what if we ended what if our civilization collapsed? Yeah, I'm not talking tomorrow. Yeah, you know, we could be a thousand years from now, Alex. You know, we don't really know, but yeah. but historically, it would be likely at some point. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Um, you know, could we? And then then intelligent life evolved again on this planet. Wouldn't they want to know a lot about us mm -hmm. and what we knew? Wouldn't they? Wouldn't be able to ask us questions? So one very simple thing I said, how would we archive what we know? Mm -hmm. That was a very simple idea. I said, you know what, it wouldn't be that hard to put a few satellites you know, going around the, the sun and we upload Wikipedia every day and mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. Uh, so you know, if we end up killing ourselves, well, it's up there and the next intelligent species will find it and learn something. That would be, they would like that, they would appreciate that. The, um, uh, so that's one thing. The next thing I said, well, what if, you know, how outside, outside of our solar system, mm -hmm. We have the SETI program. We're looking for these intelligent signals from everybody. And if you do a little bit of math, which I did in the book, uh, and you say, well, what if intelligent species only live for 10,000 years before, you know, technologically intelligent species, like ones are really able to do the stuff we're just starting to be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, well, the chances are we wouldn't be able to see any of them because they would have all been disappeared by now. Um, they wouldn't, they've lived for 10,000 years and now they're gone. And so we're not going to find these signals being sent from these people because, um, but I said, what kind of signal could you create that would last a million years or a billion years? That someone would say, damn it, someone smart lived there. Now, yeah. We know that. That would be a life-changing event for us to figure that out. Well, what we're looking for today in the SETI program isn't that. We're looking for very coded signals in some sense. Um, and so I asked myself, what would be a different type of signal one could create? Um, I've always thought about this throughout my life. And in the book, I gave one, one possible suggestion, which was, um, uh, we now detect planets going around other other suns, uh, mm -hmm. other stars. Uh, excuse me, and we do that by seeing this the the slight dimming of the light as the planets move in front of them. That's how uh, we detect uh, planets elsewhere in our galaxy. Mm -hmm. um, what if we created something like that that just rotated around our, our our around the sun and it blocked out a little bit of the light in a particular pattern that someone said, "Hey, that's not a planet. That is a sign." that someone was once there. You can say, well, what if it's beating up pi, you know, three point, whatever. Um, so the idea- From a distance, you can-, you it, can From you a can. distance, broadly broadcast, takes no continual activation on our part. This is the key, right? You, no one has to be sitting here running a computer and supplying it with power. Mm -hmm. It just goes on. So we go, it continues. And, and I argue that part of the SETI program should be looking for signals like that. And to look for signals like that, you ought to figure out what the, how would we create a signal? Like, what would we create that would be like that, that would persist for millions of years, that would be broadcast broadly, that you could see from a distance, that was unequivocal, came from an, a, a bio, a, an intelligent species? And so I gave that one example, because um, they don't know what I know of, actually. And then, and then finally, right, if, if our, ultimately our solar system will die at some point in time, you know, how do we go beyond that? And I think 
it's possible. If, if it's at all possible, we'll have to create intelligent machines that travel throughout the, throughout the, uh, the solar system or throughout the, the galaxy. And I don't think that's going to be humans. I don't think it's going to be biological organisms. So these are just things to think about, you know, mm -hmm. like what's the old, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to be like the dinosaur. I don't want to just live in there. Okay, that was it. We're done, you know. <laughs> like, well, there is a kind of presumption that we're going to live forever, which uh, I, I think it is a bit sad to imagine that the message we send is, uh, as you talk about is that we were once here instead of we are here. Well, it could be we are still here uh but it's more of a it's more of an insurance policy in case we're not here, you know. Well, the, I don't know, but there's something I think about. We, we as humans don't often think about this, but it's like uh, like whenever I um, record a video, I've I've done this a, a couple times in my life. I've recorded a video for my future self, just for mm -hmm. personal, just for fun, and it's always just fascinating to think about that preserving yourself for future civilizations. For me, yeah. it was preserving myself for a future me, but that's a little that's a little fun example yeah. of archival. Well, these podcasts are, are, are preserving you and I. In, in a way, uh, yeah. For future, um, hopefully well after we're gone. But you don't often, we're sitting here talking about this. You are not thinking about the fact that you and I are going to die and there'll be like 10 years after somebody watching this and we're still alive. You know, in, in some sense I do. I'm here because I want to talk about ideas. Right. And these ideas transcend me mm -hmm. and they transcend this time in, 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 on our planet. Um, we're talking here about ideas that could be around a thousand years from now or a million years from now. I, when I wrote my book, I had an audience in mind, and one of the clearest audiences was, was aliens. No, <laughs> were people reading this a hundred years from now? Yes. I said to myself, "How do I make this book relevant to someone reading this a hundred years from now? What would they want to know that we were thinking back then? What would make it like that was an interesting? It's still an interesting book. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure I can I achieve that, but that was how I thought about it because these ideas, like especially in the third part of the book, the ones we were just talking about. You know these crazy. It sounds like crazy ideas about you know storing our knowledge and and you know merging our brains with computers and and sending you know our machines out into space. It's not going to happen in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, and they may not even happen in the next hundred years. They may not happen for a thousand years. Who knows? Uh, but we have the unique opportunity right now. We, you, me, and other people like this um, to sort of at least propose the agenda. Um, that might impact the future like that. That's a fascinating way to think, uh, both like writing or creating, w try to make, try to create ideas, try to create things that uh, hold up in time. Yeah. You know, understanding how the brain works, we're going to figure that out once. That's it. It's going to be figured out once. And after that, that's the answer. And people will, people will study that thousands of years from now. We still, we still, you know, venerate Newton and, and Einstein. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, because because ideas are exciting even well into the future. You know, they well, the go. interesting thing is like big ideas, even if they're wrong, are still useful. Like, yeah, especially if they're not completely wrong. Like, like Newton's, right, right, right. right yeah. Newton's laws are not wrong; they're just Einstein's are better. <laughs> right? So, um, well, it's, so yeah, I mean, but we're talking with Newton and Einstein. We're talking about physics. I wonder if we'll ever achieve that kind of clarity about understanding, um, like, complex systems and the this particular manifestation of complex systems, which is the human brain. Oh, I, I'm, I'm totally optimistic we can do that. I mean, we're making progress at it. I don't see any reason why we can't completely, I mean, completely understand in the sense, um, you know, we don't really completely understand what all the molecules in this water bottle are doing, but, you know, we have laws that sort of capture it pretty good. Um, and uh, so we'll have that kind of understanding. I mean, it's not like you're going to have know what every neuron in your brain is doing. Um, but, but enough to, uh, to, first of all, to build it. Yeah. And second of all, to do, you know, do what physics does, which is like have uh, concrete experiments yeah. where we oh, can yeah. validate. I, I, we're, 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 this is happening right now. Like it's not, this is not some future thing. Um, you know, I'm very optimistic about it because I'm, I know about our, our work and what we're doing. We'll have to prove it to people. Um, but um, I, I consider myself a rational person 
And, um, you know, until fairly recently, I wouldn't have said that. But right now, I'm, where I'm sitting right now, I'm saying, you know, we, we can, this is going to happen. There's, there's no big obstacles to it. Um, we finally have a framework for understanding what's going on in the cortex. And, um, and that's liberating. It's, it's like, oh, it's happening. So I, I can't see why we wouldn't be able to understand it. I just can't. Okay. Oh, so, I mean, on that topic, let me ask you to play devil's advocate. Is it possible for you to imagine look look a hundred years from now mm. and looking at your book uh in which ways might your ideas be wrong oh i worry about this all the time um yeah but still useful yeah <laughs> yeah i think there's you know um well i i can i can best relate it to like things i'm worried about right now mm -hmm. So we talk about this voting idea, right? It's happening. There's, there's no question it's happening, but it could be far more. Um, uh, there's there's enough things I don't know about it that it might be working in ways differently than I'm thinking about the kind of what's voting, who's voting, you know, where are representations. I talked about like you have a thousand models of the coffee cup mm -hmm. like that. That could turn out to be wrong uh, because it may be. Maybe there are a thousand models that are sub models, but not really a single model of the coffee cup. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's things, these are all sort of on the edges, things that I, I present as like, oh, it's so simple and clean. Well, it's not that. It's always going to be more complex. And, um, and there's parts of the theory which I don't understand the complexity well. So Do I think, I think the, the idea is that the brain is a distributed modeling system is not controversial at all, right? It's not, that's well understood by many people. The question then is, are each cortical column an independent modeling system? Right. Um, I could be wrong about that. Um, I don't think so, but I worry about it. My intuition, not even thinking why you could be wrong is the same intuition I have about any sort of physicist, uh, like string theory, that we as humans desire for a clean explanation. And a uh, hundred years from now, uh, intelligent systems might look back at us and laugh at how we try to get rid of the whole mess by having simple explanation yeah. when the reality is it's, it's way messier. And in fact, it's impossible to understand. You can only build it. It's like this idea of complex systems and cellular automata. Yeah. You can only launch the thing. You cannot understand it. Yeah, I think that, you know, the history of science suggests that's not likely to occur. Right. Um, the history of science suggests that, look, as a theorist, and we're yeah. theorists, you look for simple explanations, right? Fully knowing that whatever simple explanation you're going to come up with is not going to be completely correct. I mean, it can't be. I mean, it's just it's just more complexity. But that's the role of theorists play. They they mm -hmm. sort of they give you a framework on which you now can talk about a problem and figure out okay, now we can start digging more details. The best frameworks stick around while the details change. You know, again, you know, the classic example is Newton and Einstein, right? You know, um, Newton's th theories are still used. They're still valuable. They're still practical. They're not like wrong. It's just they've been refined. Yeah, but that's in physics. It's not obvious, by the way. It's not obvious for physics either that the universe should be such that it's amenable to these I, I simple. Know, but it's so far it appears to be, <laughs> as far uh, as we can tell. Um uh, yeah, I mean, but as far as we could tell, and the, but it's also an open question whether the brain is amenable to such clean theories. That's the uh, well, not the brain, but intelligence. Well, I, I, I don't know. I would take intelligence out of it. Just say, you know, um, well, okay. Um, the evidence we have suggests that the, the human brain is, is is a at the one time extremely messy and complex, but there's some parts that are very regular and structured. Mm -hmm. That's why we started the neocortex. It's extremely regular in its structure. Yeah. And unbelievably so. And then I mentioned earlier, the other thing is it's it's universal abilities. It is so flexible to learn so many things. We don't we, we haven't figured out what it can't learn yet. We don't know, but we haven't figured it out yet. But it can learn things that it never was evolved to learn. So those give us hope. Um, that's why I went into this field because I said, you know, this regular structure, it's <laughs> doing this amazing number of things. There's got to be some underlying principles that are that are common. And other other scientists have come up with the same conclusions. Um, and so, so it's promising. It's promising. Yeah. And um, and that's 
and whether the theories play out exactly this way or not, that is the role that theorists play. And so far, it's worked out well, even though, you know, maybe, you know, we don't understand all the laws of physics. But so far, it's been pretty damn useful. The ones we have, yeah. our, our, our theories are pretty bit useful. 